guys, hope you're all well and welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about a lens that really changed my career in professional sports photography. It is oh, the Nikon 600mm f4 or in this case the box of it. Okay so this is the 600mm f4 uh, or to give it its official title it is the Nikon AFS Nikkor 600mm F4 G ED VR lens. So basically, this is the last example of the uh, mirrored lenses, if you will, apart from when they went to like the the fluorite elements. So this is why this looks absolutely gigantic. Is because it is. It's bloody heavy. But this lens, for my career as a sports photographer, I was uh, specialising in equestrian photography for like, well, near 20 years, was an absolute game changer. So I'm just going to cradle it like a baby for a minute, and I'll just talk about this lens. So my signature toward the end of my career was using two lenses. One of them was the 600mm on a D800, and the other was a 200 f2, which I'll make a complete separate video about, on another D800. Everyone gave me a load of shit for it. Uh, they kind of agreed with the 200 f2. They thought the 600 was just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, as you can see, I always used it on a monopod, and they just said it was too long, too big. Uh, I didn't really... Give a, give a damn about what, what anyone else said. I went and did my own thing. But this lens has produced some of the best images of my whole career to date. I absolutely love it. Of course, not just for sports, you can use this lens for a number of things, you know, birding, wildlife, oh, sport, you know, some people, and I've seen some people use this for landscape work if you're really trying to get like a Pacific shot that you can only use a long lens for. So, and actually, even though it's massive, it's heavy, the front element is as big as my head, this lens is extremely versatile. Now, I used to use this, like I said, for equestrian photography and sports photography, and what this lens did for me was it allowed me to be in more places at once. And now that's, that might sound really odd, but what it did, because it gave me that 600mm reach, instead of me walking across country track, like four or five star, whatever, um, <clears throat> it allowed me to stand in a place and get jumps and shots that I never would normally, uh, or I would have to normally physically walk all the way over to the fences, take everything and walk all the way back and do other things. This lens, it, in a sense, it kind of made me a little bit lazy. Because now, with a 600, instead of being able to get like a couple of horses going over two fences and then moving, getting them over three, and then moving again, getting them over another two. In some places, if you were you know, kind of smart and you knew where to stand, this lens could cover about five shots. So you're talking, you know, if you're thinking about taking stuff for advertisers, which I was back in the day, you know, you get five chances to get one person over a fence, which is absolutely brilliant, instead of being able to get one shot and one opportunity. So, you know, it, it really did revolutionise basically my uh, client work as well, I was able to get more shots, but again, it allowed me to be, uh, well, more energetic throughout a day, because I was doing less walking, or the fact that I was doing the same amount of walking, but getting better different, more creative shots than you know than you would normally with like your 70 to 200, your 200 mils, your 300 mils, etc. Um, a lot of people in the sport industry use a 400 2.8 and that is an absolutely fantastic lens, I'm not knocking it, they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, I know now the thing is if what people really want to achieve and think they've made it is a 300 2.8, again, absolutely fantastic lenses. Uh, not locking them at all, but for me, the my made it was always the 600mm. I borrowed one of these from Nikon 
to cover an event called Babington Horse Trials. Uh, those in the US will know that's probably one of the most toughest uh, events going out there if you're familiar with that sort of equestrian world uh, compared to it to like the, ten the Kentucky uh, three day event that's kind of like its equivalent um, and I actually fell in love with it so I bought this lens for an eye-watering £7,000 back in the day and I think uh, say that's probably, I'd say, eight and a half, nine thousand dollars This lens today, I hate to say it, because I'm thinking about selling it, because I don't use it anymore, is around £2,800, £2,600. The second-hand market for massive lenses like this and the mirrorless, the mirrored, sorry, system, DSLR system, has just sadly skyrocketed. Uh, sorry, not skyrocketed, plummeted all the way down. Um, so you can pick up a lens like this, a pro lens that costs nearly, you know, nearly eight grand. Uh, basically, I think it was seven thousand two hundred and whatever, or whatever, you know. So basically, seven grand. Let's just say seven grand now for a second-hand car, which I completely understand. Is still an absolutely ridiculous statement. This lens here is uh, a car for, for, for basically for all intents and purposes. I completely understand, um, but this lens has been an absolute dream. And I'm not going to go into the specs of it. It's, an, it's a constant f4, it stops down to f22. Uh, it's the new, even though it's VR, which you can probably see by the nameplate there. It's not the red VR, which means it's the second version of Nikon's VR system. Uh, it's VR2, but it's not classed as VR2, which is kind of weird, but that, that's what it is. Um, like I said, the 4G stands for that this is a full electronic system all the way through. So if you want to change the aperture, there is no aperturing at the back with like the D lenses. So this is all done remotely through your camera system. I use this on the D800 DSLRs, I've used this on my Nikon F5, it is extremely versatile lens. You can also use this lens on the Nikon mirrorless system as well. Um, bear in mind that you have to have an adapter, you have to have the uh, Nikon F to Nikon Z adapter to use this lens, but you can use it, uh, use all the autofocus, use all the VRs, etc. Um, it is an absolute beast, and I absolutely love this lens. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the images from this. A slightly different video about me talking about the glory days and why I love this lens. Um, but like I say, I think I might sell it because now I'm not in the sports world. Um, I'm doing a lot more street and sort of life stuff, just capturing life as and when with my uh, Leica M system. So, um, who knows, this, this, this probably might go for sale, but I absolutely love it, it's an amazing lens, I just thought I would uh, let you guys uh, on the channel know about it, and uh, show you some images about it. But anyway guys, thank you so much for all the love and support on the channel, I really do appreciate it, thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers guys!